Hello, welcome back to A Shot of Wildlife and welcome back to The Forgotten Pond. You may remember The Forgotten Pond from an underwater video I did last year. I promised I would return, so here we are. I don't know the history of the pond and truthfully, I have no idea what creatures could be lurking beneath the surface. As I arrived at the water's edge, I could see a carp cruising among the weeds, but it was way too far out for my waterproof camera, and there was a different species that I was hoping to film. I always like to set myself a challenge, so today I've got my underwater camera, and I'm hoping to film a tench beneath the surface, and I've also got my proper camera, and I'm hoping to film a kingfisher. So, let's start taking a look. Now this is genuinely the first time that I put the camera underneath the water and at the time I couldn't see what it was pointing at, but how good is my luck? From the bank I still hadn't seen that it was there and was trying to get some footage of these smaller fish with orange fins which are called rudd. It's now when I realise that there is a tench, and not a small one, swimming right next to my camera. They're usually quite a shy fish, and are typically found in large ponds, lakes, and slow flowing water, especially where there are lots of weeds, and where the bottom is silty. Their diet is mainly made up of invertebrates, such as pond snails and insect larvae. This one was about a foot long, and you may notice it has a large scar down one side of its body. I don't know what would have caused this, perhaps a cormorant, a heron, or maybe even an otter. As you can see, it didn't seem at all phased by the camera. What a brilliant start. Well, I can't believe it. I literally couldn't have made this up. The camera, this camera that we're holding right now, had been in the water for probably 30 seconds and a tench swam into view. Now, I've only ever filmed a tench once before. It was here about a year ago, but that one, this one's much bigger. I can't believe it. I, I'm actually a little bit lost for words. How, how brilliant. I'm pretty sure the footage is great as well. <sighs> now I've just got to see a kingfisher and I can call it a day, a <laughs> quick trip. <laughs> It wasn't going to be a quick trip, but at least things had got off to a great start. When it comes to kingfishers, there isn't much you can do, except for wait and hope that they land somewhere you can see them. But there was a different fish eating bird perched nearby, a cormorant. They used to be a bird of coastlines, but these days it's not uncommon to see them on inland water bodies such as this. It's thought that the original variety of cormorant has gradually been displaced by a variant from mainland Europe that is more used to living away from the coast, and that explains their apparent movement in land. They are great swimmers, and from this one's perch, it must have looked like an all-you-can-eat buffet down below. Although this carp is probably too big even for the hungriest of cormorants. For you it's probably been about five minutes, six minutes, but I've been here for about three hours now and I've only just caught a glimpse of a kingfisher. Unfortunately it did see me before I could get my camera pointed towards it, but it's a good sign they're in the area. I think I've just seen one, hang on. Oh no. Nope, don't worry, it was just fish splashing. Um, however, there are kingfishers in the area. There's also swans in the area hissing at me. Um, Hopefully it will come back and hopefully I can catch it on film. I've probably got about an hour left until I need to go, so fingers crossed. Despite visiting the pond quite a few times in recent weeks, this is the first time that I've seen swans there. With their two well-grown cygnets, they must have been there the whole time, as these youngsters wouldn't be able to fly just yet. I had brought some corn and fish pellets with me in case I needed to try to lure the fish closer to film them, but almost all of this went to the swans. Here's how that looked under the water.
there was also a lot of natural food for them. They'll eat pondweed, algae and invertebrates, of which there are plenty in this pond. The cygnets will stay with their parents into the autumn, when the adults will likely chase them away or leave the pond themselves to spend the winter on a larger body of water. Whilst the swans fed, I noticed that lots of pond skaters had gathered in the shallows, scared of becoming dinner themselves. See how their splayed legs hold them on the surface tension where they can dart around looking for prey. They use sensitive hairs on their legs to find insects that are unlucky enough to fall into the water, although this wasp is a bit too much of a challenge even for them. On the far side of the pool, I noticed some small birds moving among the margins, more hens. These are usually quite bold in places where they see people often, but here they are very timid and hid whenever I was in view. Apparently, when selecting a mate, female moorhens will choose small, chunky males over larger, slimmer birds. With my time to see a kingfisher running out, I put the underwater camera in a different place, hoping to see some other species of fish. There were plenty of fish to choose from, and just like the first spot, most of these are rudd. Rudd are very similar to another common freshwater fish, the roach, but can be separated from them as roach have downturned mouths, and in rudd, their mouths point upwards. This helps them to feed in the upper layers of the water, with a lot of their diet consisting of insects and other organic matter that falls onto the surface. The keen-eyed among you may have already noticed that there is a second species of fish among the rudd, without the orange fins and darker in colour, common carp. These are very small, at about 3 to 4 inches, and would have hatched in a pond either last year or in the spring of this year. They were more skittish than the rudd, and I didn't get much footage of them, but it's interesting to know that the carp are successfully spawning here. I'm sure this place has a lot of other secrets, and I'm definitely going to come back in the future to try to uncover more of them. And time's up. That means I have, for the first time in quite a while, failed in my quest. I failed to film a kingfisher, but I did definitely film a tench underwater. And this is what watching wildlife's all about, really. If I wanted to guarantee that I was gonna see an animal, I'd just go to a zoo. Wildlife is sometimes there, and sometimes it's not there. Now, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one that's on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.